Hi everyone, welcome to our second TU How To. That's Trex Unique How To, in case no one knows what TU is. And today we're covering air intakes. So I'm going to explain a little bit about the history of the air intakes and how they benefit you as far as mileage and fuel economy and all that good stuff. So I'm going to read a little history about air intakes. The aftermarket company k and Engineering first offered air intakes in the late 1980s. Those intakes consisted of ro rotational molded plastic intake tubes and a conical cotton gauze air filter. In the late 1990s, the profilation of the air intake manufacturers such as AM, AEM, Air Aid, TrueFlow, and Volant entered the fray. In addition to overseas manufacturers imported their designs leading to the popularity of Japan domestic market air intakes for sport compact markets. k and and many other intake companies now offer intake systems and metal tube designs allowing a greater degree of customization. The tubes can be powder coated, painted to match the vehicles. In the beginning, air intakes usually started out consisted of just a round air filter such as this. I know that's a very small picture, so... You're going to help. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. All that was was a air filter that went on top of a standard carburetor with a wet intake. And for those who do not know what a wet intake is, a wet intake is the intake manifold that sets on top of the engine and it, through the carburetor, is an air-fuel mixture that goes into the intake manifold. Today's intakes are a lot different. They're dry intakes and they're fuel injected. They work a lot differently. And I'll cover that here in just a moment. So what they did in the old days, they put these air filters on there, or they used a ram air box that went on top of the carburetor, like that. And it forced more air into the carburetor through the wet intake manifold into the engine which you got a better, cleaner air flow and mixture, fuel air mixture into the engine, which boosts the horsepower and efficiency. This is, uh, this is what a wet intake looks like right here. Carburetor set right on top of that. And then the filter element set right on top in the air fuel mixture went into the top of the intake manifold into the engine. The, uh, nowadays, they're a lot more sophisticated, and they use a dry intake manifold, which normally looks like that. That's one for an LS1 engine, like in a Corvette. So there's a fuel rail right here. The front of the intake, where the air comes through, goes right here. Then it mixes with the fuel injection mixture below the intake manifold. So it's dry air going in, and the fuel is mixed with the air below the intake manifold, unlike the old wet intakes. They're a lot more efficient, you can do a lot more with them, and there are a lot more types of air intakes available for these types of engines. Just about everything now, are fuel, they're, they're fuel injected with dry intakes like this. Some examples of um, intakes are one like this. This is one for a Dodge Hemi engine. It's uh, relatively large, much larger than the stock air box that came out of the, the Hemi. It uh, incorporates cooler airflow through the front of the engine, through the front of the truck through the engine. It uh, uses a much larger tube going into the throttle body. I don't have the tube here running what it would look like running into the front of the intake manifold. Some examples of what the stock intake manifolds look like are ones like these. This beast is off of a Ford F-150, a 2007 model. This is the part that hooks up to the throttle body. Right here, the air filter is enclosed in here. This is the intake tube which pulls air from the, usually through the fender. It's very restrictive. You're looking at this large, big beast right here that has baffles on it. These air baffles are designed 
to baffle the air flow as it comes in, and it's mainly just designed to quiet the air flow down. So it makes it makes it quieter, but it also restricts the airflow. So what they do on most intakes, I'm going to set this on the floor and I'll drop it. On most intakes, they change it to a shorter, more direct airflow tube like this, which allows the air to flow more efficiently to, to the throttle body. It's uh, a lot more efficient, boost horsepower. It's also a little louder, so the disadvantage, the disadvantage of that is you're going to hear the intake more. When you're, when you're giving it gas and going heavy on the throttle, you're going to hear that airflow through this tube more so than you are through this thing. So there are, there are some sacrifices in that the fact that you probably will hear it a little bit more. Now in some trucks with a well-insulated hood and it's well-insulated in the cab area, you may not hear that. But that's why the manufacturers do that. That's why the manufacturers make these. Like that everybody asks why they do that. Why do they design air intakes like that? They just design it so it's quiet. It's not very efficient though. So, that's a, that's a basic um, basic assumption of what intakes do, how they work. Anybody have any questions so far? Great question. <coughs> so dry intake would mean that the fuel is mixed with the air after the intake. Is that that's you correct? Mean? Yeah, you have a dry intake. you have the dry intake manifold that's usually setting on top of the engine, and you have direct airflow into each cylinder. And then you have a fuel injector for each cylinder also. Okay. So that, that fuel mixture is mixed when the air comes through dry intake and the, the fuel mixture is mixed with the air to each cylinder. And the old carbureted engines, there were wet intakes. The fuel mixed in the carburetor at the top of the intake manifold together through the air and then into each one of the cylinders. So the, the fuel injected engines, all just about all manufactured trucks and cars are fuel injected now. You don't see any carburetor out. The first, uh, first fuel injected engines usually were TBI, throttle body injection. And what they did was, it was a, basically a carburetor had two injectors on top of the wet intake and mixed fuel air mixture that way. And then went to direct fuel injection or EFI, electric fuel injection. And that mixed after the, the intake now. Hopefully that helps yeah. help explain that. So all of them hook to the throttle body now, usually with an intake tube like these. This is this part right here is is the air coming in. This part connects to the throttle body and then the intake now for uh, a lot of people have questions about uh, dry filters versus wet filters on these intakes. A lot of manufacturers now make dry filters. And uh, you don't have to, you don't have to, you, you, you can clean them just like a wet filter, but you don't have to re-oil them. In my opinion, there's actually some disadvantages with a dry filter versus a wet filter. And the reason for that is uh, oil in a wet filter, such as this, where you see pink, was traditionally, most manufacturers make that color. And that's the color of the dye in the oil. Some some manufacturers make them oops, sorry. Some manufacturers make them green or yellow or blue. Most manufacturers are uh, red or pink. Um, dry filters, in my opinion, don't suspend the small elements or dust or dirt coming through the filter as much as a wet filter or oil filter does. So they they actually they're actually cleaner. You can take, for example, which they might have thought about and they could do it with some graphite, which is very, very fine, and sprinkle it on a dry filter, just a little test. Put a piece of paper underneath it, sprinkle it on a dry filter, and I can guarantee you through that dry filter you'll see some of that graphite fall into the paper. You do that to an oil filter, none of them will come through. But just don't allow the air to pass through. Very still slow, it's easy as the dry. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still just as efficient. It does suspend the 